Viva. Viva. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. <laughs> hey, what happened yesterday? <laughs> what happened yesterday? How was it? What happened with you, teacher? Yeah, I'm so sorry. I really, I apologize. You know that word, right? Apologize. Okay. Apologize means las disculpas del caso. All right. But it was impossible for me to get into the class, you know, but it was raining. And it seems that it affected my, uh, the internet connection. Okay. So I was just what? going to start with the class, but suddenly um, I couldn't get into it, right? So, well, I'm sorry for that, but tonight we're going to start by by talking a little bit about what we were supposed to study yesterday. It happened that uh, yesterday, well, let's wait a little bit for the rest. Uh, let us take advantage of time and uh, tell me what, what have you learned lately? Look at the chat, please. In the chat, I will I will type the, one of the questions that we're gonna be uh, talking about tonight. What have you learned lately? Of course, uh, I'm talking about English, right? So what have you learned uh, lately in English? Something new. I, I know that you have been studying English, right? So I hope that you have been uh, practicing and um, getting some new vocabulary. So I will ask one by one to tell me a little bit about what about some expressions, about some new words, or something that you want to surprise everybody here, okay? With, uh, for example, Maria Magdalena. Hello, teacher. Hello, hello. Yes, I I learn. The the phrase um, this is uh, this is the only way. This is the only way. Yes. Okay. This is the only way. That's the expression you learned. Yes. Yes, teacher. All right. So lower this. Thank you, Maria. Lower this. Tell me, please. Let's try to make some time for the people who haven't got into the class yet. Lower this, new expressions, new words, new phrases. So everybody be ready with the expressions, with the quotes, with the words, vocabulary. Oh, lower this, it seems as if lower this. It's facing some problems with connection. Let us see, Juan Carlos, what about you, Juan Carlos? New expressions, new words, new phrases. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, when uh, I learn uh, the expression the of music. All right. Like for example. For example, uh, is a. Es que era una una música electrónica y para ser sincero me olvidó hoy le iba a repasar en la mañana. Okay, so try to get it, please. Try to get Gabriela. I know Gabriela has something new for everybody here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Hi there. Um, I was listening to some, some. All right. In English, uh, but for example, you can try, but but. You never forget your name. But you never forget your name. 
Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Okay, pretty good. Now I have 16 people connected. Thank you, Gabriela. Thank you, everybody. Okay, if you want to participate and say something, like surprise the group about something you've learned lately, that would be fantastic, right? So remember that you have the opportunity to participate in the class whenever you want, okay? Uh, we have 60 minutes and well, we checklist attendance as soon as possible. Then we're gonna go to the topic that we are in charge of working tonight. Well, yesterday we were supposed to start with it, but as I told you before, it was impossible for me to do it. All right, so I have Aris, no, Alejandra Maria. Aristides? Sí, present. Okay, this is, is the Carlos David. Present teacher. Cesar? Present. Present teacher. Claudia Margarita? I'm here, teacher. Concepción? Lourdes? Present teacher. Present teacher. Present teacher. Dalila? Present teacher. Elena? Present teacher. Gabriela? Present teacher. Idalia? So Idalia is missing. Present, present. Ah, yeah, Idalia is there. Ileana? Present teacher. Ingrid? Present teacher. Juan Carlos? Present teacher. Crisia? No. I am here. Liliana? Liliana? Maria Magdalena. Present teacher. Okay, Olga Lisette. Present teacher. Rina. Teacher. Tell me. Present. All right, and Wendy. Present teacher. Okay, Wendy's over here. Now, listen, since yesterday was impossible for me to get connected, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna have classes this coming Friday, okay? Okay. Okay, so I, I hope to see you this coming Friday. Okay, don't forget it because yesterday was vacation time for you. Okay, so mm -hmm. but but on Friday, you know, we're gonna we're gonna have classes, okay? So well, we're gonna start. Uh the topic for tonight is about present perfect. We're gonna talk a little bit about it, we're gonna uh, work in a couple of activities. I will share the screen with you so that you can see what I mean. Okay, look at it. Mm. We're gonna work in that section number four. Hey, actually, hey, people, next week we're gonna finish with this. So time runs so fast, it, it, it really surprises me. Well, over here, we're going to practice asking asking and answering questions in English by using what? By, by using what, people? What's present the top? Ah, the present perfect. And also, simple past. Simple past. All right. But first, listen, I was just thinking about the importance of talking about present perfect first. Okay. Uh, and then, let, let, we're, uh, well, tomorrow we're going to try to make a comparison between both of them. But I consider that uh, significant to have some review in case you haven't studied present perfect before, to have some, I mean, to start talking um, about present perfect first. You know, we have just uh, uh, finished talking about past, per, past simple, and now it's time to work with present perfect. So that's why I decided to present a PowerPoint presentation in which I will share the majority of the information about present perfect and um, the importance of it. We have, we, we have, can you see the presentation? Yes, teacher. Yes. Yeah, all right. So we're gonna start with it. So it will take a little bit it will take like some minutes to talk about it, but it's gonna be significant. 
Have you ever studied in, I mean, the present perfect before? Have you ever studied present perfect before? Yes or no? More or less. More you oh ah, okay. So this is this is like the second time you studied present perfect then. Okay, so second time, third time, fourth time, we don't know. All right, but hey. You have seen that movie many times. Have you seen this movie many times? Yes, it's so. Aha. Uh -huh. They say, yes, I have. You have seen that movie many times. Have you seen that movie many times? Have you seen this movie many times? Yes, Not I have. Yes, yes I you have. have. Have you seen this movie many times? No, I, no haven't. I haven't. I haven't, right? So that's so. Have you seen this movie many times? Yes, I have. <laughs> All right. No, so mirrors. now, what is what El is seen a much team? Oh, all right. So what is, for example, the structure that we're gonna study? What do you see there? What is the structure, people? Present, perfect teams. But if 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 we divide these, what do we see? What is this? Auxiliary. As an auxiliary, right? This is this a verb or an auxiliary? This is the auxiliary we use. Auxiliary. Yeah, this is auxiliary. the auxiliary we use. And what is this? Is the past participle of the verb C. Excellent. Past participle of the verb C. So, and you have it at the beginning when you have a question and you include not when you want to uh, make it in a negative statement. All right. So let us go over the next part so that we can see What's going on with these things? When do we use it? Uh -huh. When do we use it? You have studied this in advance. So tell me, when do we use present perfect, people? Just one. It says unspecified time before now. What does it mean? Unspecified time before now. Do you have any idea? Let us see. Mm. When do we? Who, who wants to help me to read? Me, teacher. Oh, thank you, Juan Carlos. Okay, let's start with Juan Carlos and then uh, the lady who wants to participate will help me with the rest, okay? When use the person perfect to say that uh, action happening at um, use pensive, use pensive time uh, before now. The exact, the exact, the the exact time is not important. The exact time important. is not important, right? So, excellent. So, it happened, an action that happened at an unspecified time before now. So, that, that means that it happened when? In the past? In the past. In the past, but when? Um, when? specific time uh, and specified time say that we don't know right i don't uh, we don't know we don't know when when it happened okay so we don't know actually so that's why it says unspecified time do we use it in spanish yes we do, we do it right 
we do it when when we say for example hey yo he escalado el volcán Izalco what what is the tense present perfect when it happened cuando sucedió I don't know we don't know but it happened right yeah, pero si sí sucedió know. all right so that this is the first case okay this is the first bit. You cannot use the present perfect with specific, specific time expressions such as yesterday. So this is important, people. Don't use it with expression with yesterday, one year ago, last year, last week, last year, when I was a child, when I lived in Japan, at a moment, that day, one day, etc. It's impossible because, because it's, it, it happened in a specified time. All right? So whenever you have a question, let me know it, please. Let's see. We can use present perfect with unspecific expressions such as ever, never, once, many times, several times, before, so far, already, yet, etc. This one are allowed because they are not telling us about a specific time in the past. Look. How do you actually use the present perfect? The concept of unspecified time can be very confusing to English learners. It is best associate present perfect with the following topics. Topic one, experience. You can use the present perfect to describe your experience. It is like saying, I have the experience of. You can also use these things to say that you have never had a certain experience. Example, I have been to France. The sentence means that you have had the experience of being in France. I have never been to France. The sentence means that you have not had the experience of going to France. So in the first one, the person uh, went to France. I mean, visited France. When did, when did the person do it? We don't know it. And the second one, it's negative. I had never been to France. So that means that the person never visited friends in the past. Look, topic two, change over time. We often use the present perfect to talk about change that has happened over a period of time. Example, you've grown since last time I saw you. So in this case, it's a little bit different because it says we often use present perfect to talk about change that has happened over a period of time. You have grown since last time I saw you. My English has really improved since I moved to Australia. Now, can you see the difference between this one and the previous one? Topic three. We often use present perfect to list uh, the accomplishment of individuals in humanity. You can mention a specific time. Example. Man has walked on the moon. Our son has learned how to read. Uh, doctors have cured many deadly diseases. So far so good? Questions? So far so good. Hey, what is the, what is the base form of this verb? <laughs> what is the base form? Grow. Grow. What is the past? Grew. Grew. And now we're starting grown. Improve is regular. Watch. Regular. Learned. Regular and irregular. Because you, you can do it in a different way. Cured. Regular. Okay. So this is a little bit different from the previous one. How? Because in the in the previous one, you say something that you have uh, experienced. But over here, you are talking about changes over the time or accomplishments. You see? Somehow it's tied in the past with the present. No questions? Mm. Juan Carlos? No, not really. 
Anybody in the group? Now is the time to master present perfect tense. Always we need to use past participle. Yes, important. That's a good question, right? Past participle over here, past participle over here. Some people get confused because, you know, improve is a regular verb and it is in ed. The, the present improved, the past improved, and the past participle improved. So we need to be we need to be clear that this is past participle. Walked, learned, and cured. All right. Now let's go over the next part. The topic four is about an uncompleted action you are expecting. We often use the present perfect to say that an action uh, which we expect it has not happened. Using the present perfect suggests that we are still waiting for the for the action to happen. Example: Jim has not finished his homework yet. What is that? Uncompleted action. Bill has still not arrived, so that means that he is just coming, coming back home, but he's in the track of coming to home. The rain hasn't stopped. It began to rain in the past. It's raining in the present, and maybe it's going to continue raining in the future. So, uncompleted action. Clear? The duration from the past until now. With non-continuous verb, we use the present perfect to show that sometime has something started in the past and has continued up until now for five minutes or for two weeks. And since Tuesday are all durations which can be used with the present perfect. More example, I have had a cold for two weeks. It started in the past, it continues in the present, and we don't know if it will if it will continue in the future, so it's connecting, okay. Started in the past and continued up until now. She has been in England for six months. Mary has loved chocolate since she was a little girl, okay. So this is a different one. As, as you can see, we are we are just studying different uses of present perfect. Okay, changes over time, accomplishments. What was the first one? First one was about experience. Second one is about uh, change over time. Third one is about accomplishment. Number four is the one we are just talking about, about uncompleted actions. Okay, and we also need to know a little about the way to form it. You know, present perfect, is created or formed by using auxiliaries. The auxiliary is the verb, uh, I mean, the, the, auxiliary, the auxiliary is have, but if we talk about third person singular, we're gonna use has. I have, you have, he has, she has, it has. Plus, uh, but this is gonna be, we're gonna get into, the past uh, present perfect continues because we need to see it also, right? And in the present perfect continuous, we're gonna encounter this, okay? Subject plus have or has plus the verb to be in the past participle form and another very naive form. Examples? You have been waiting here for two hours. Have you been waiting here for two hours? You have not been waiting here for two hours. Okay. Can you see the difference between the, the previous one and this one? You have a very naive form. Previous that you have a verb, I mean the verb to be in the past participle. You have the auxiliary have or has. And then you have a subject and a complement, right? So this is what we have in this case, right? Let's see, because we have some more 
some more uh, info. Now, duration from the past until now, we use present perfect continuous to show that something started in the past and has continued up until now for five minutes, for two weeks, and since Tuesday are all durations we can be used with the present perfect continuous. She's been working. What have you been doing for the last 30 minutes? James has been teaching at the university since June. Recently or lately, you can also use a present perfect continuous without a duration, such as for two weeks, without the duration. That thing has a more general meaning of lately. We often use the words lately or recently to emphasize this meaning. She's been watching too much television lately. Have you been exercising lately? It is important to remember that the non-continuous verb cannot be used in any continuous tenses. Instead of using present perfect continuous with the verbs, you must use present perfect. So how come Sam has been having his car for two years? So why is this not correct? ¿Por qué no está correcta esta? It's because of the verb. Yeah. That is the problem, right? That is the problem. That's because, you know, we have um, non-continuous verbs, non-continuous verbs. So the best way, la forma correcta sería, Sam has had his car for two years. Now the verb is the correct one. Had. Okay, keep it in mind. Later, we're gonna have the comparison, you know, with a simple pass. But now we're gonna complete these exercises. There is a conversation over here. And for example, uh, well, I <laughs> just saw some of them, right? I think the waiter forgot. We were here for over half an hour and nobody take our order yet. How to complete this part, people? Hello? <clears throat> me, teacher. Tell, tell me, please. I think the waiter forgotten us. We wait here for over half an hour and nobody took our order yet. Mm, okay. Nobody taken our order yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else? Look at it. What is the first one? Me, teacher. Tell me, please, Claudia. I think is I think the waiter forgot us. We have been waiting here for a, over half an hour. In nobody uh, have taken or ordered yet. Okay, thank you. Now, let us see the directions. Using the words in parentheses, forget, wait, take, complete this, the text below with the appropriate tenses, right? Present perfect or present perfect continuum is the information that I have just presented. And over here we have waiter. I think the waiter has forgotten. Ah, pretty good. Excellent. No, yes, right? Has. Has forgotten. Remember that we need to use 
the auxiliaries. Has, in this case, this is third person singular. Has what? Forgotten, says somebody else. Forgotten, uh, else. forgotten as we. Uh, it we says, are waiting. We are waiting. Yeah. We have waiting. Uh, we have waiting. Waiting. We have, we have waiting. No, but listen, one question that you, you may ask is like, are they still waiting? Ah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wait. Oh. Now, listen. We have uh, been waiting. Wait, mm, waiting. All right. So something that you need to that you need to ask or to think it's about, hey, are they still waiting there? Because if we say it in Spanish, si no era nosotros esperando. Si, si lo decimos en español, miren, creo que eh, el camarero nos ha olvidado, has forgotten us. We have been estamos, waiting here. Si yo digo, ajá, hemos estado esperando aquí for over half an hour and anybody y nadie ha tomado nuestra bote todavía. Yeah, ajá, so so let us say it once again, please. Okay, is I think the word the waiter the waiter the has, has forgotten here and us. We have, have been, been waiting. waiting here for over half an hour in the party. Have been waiting. Have taken. Have taken. Or has taken. Uh, now why has? But why has? Por qué has? Por qué has? Se refiere a un tercero, nobody. Nobody va, siempre va a ser tercera persona, ¿ok? Oh. ¿Ok? Nobody. That's the only thing you need to, to keep in mind. Now, let us try with the next. En la siguiente no, no le voy a dar mucho, ¿ok? Veamos. Now, Michelle. I see you, Brian. Y... He has walked. He has walked. Walked. But of the yes, he, he has walked by us at least 20 times. He probably thinks we have, have been ordered. He has been walking. He's been walking by us at least 20 times. Or he has walked uh, uh, by us at least 20 times. So, look at this. What is the best option? Mm -hmm. I think you're right. He has walked by us at least 20 times. He probably thinks we order already. We, we have been ordered. We have. We have. Being. Mm. Now, let, let us see the info here. I think you're right. He has worked. Mm -hmm. Por qué no you say he has been working? Eso, eso, esa es la mejor opción. I think you're right. Creo que tienes razón. Él se ha paseado por este lado por lo menos 20 veces. Probablemente piensa que nosotros no tenemos la orden. orden. Ya, ya hemos... ordenamos. Ya hemos ordenado. How do you say that in English? Mm 
Una idea. No. Look at it. Now, try to practice this because later you're gonna tell you're gonna you're gonna reproduce this conversation at the end. Okay. Hey, I think you're right. He's walked by us at least 20 times. He probably thinks we we have already ordered. Now, next one. Look at that couple over there. They here for five or ten minutes and they already have their food. They have they have only mm -hmm. they have only they only have been here they have only been they have only, only been, been here for five or the ten minutes and they they have been only have the food. Look, they have only been they only. have only been here for five or ten minutes and they already have the food. So what are they doing? ¿Cómo dicen quejarse en inglés? What are they doing? How do you say that in English? But they say complain, right? They are complaining. Now, look at this. He must realize we yet we sit here for over half an hour staring at him. <laughs> uh -huh. We haven't. He must realize we haven't haven't or order order. He must realize we, we have, haven't okay. ordered yet. Is that right? Uh huh. Oh. Mm -hmm. We, we sit here for over mm -hmm. half an hour staring at him. We have sitting here. We have? We have been? We have been yeah. sitting yeah. here <laughs> for so, so. over half an hour staring at him. You know staring, right? Staring at him and then we have the, the, the next part for Robbie. I don't know if he noticed even us. We run from table to table taking orders and serving foods and serving food. Okay. Uh, I don't know if he has has even noticed noticed. I don't know if he has even noticed 
us. All right. He ran from table to table, taking orders and serving food. He has been. He has. He has been running from table to table, taking orders and serving food. Excellent. Hey, he's been or he has been running from table to table, taking orders and serving food. Good. That's true. And he hasn't looked look it in then, all direction well and he hasn't looked in our direction once okay so do me the favor to practice the conversation during five minutes practically yo voy a decir quién va a jugar el rol de quién okay me interesa que Lo practiquen, lo vean perfectamente cómo es que se completa la conversación y ya luego pues yo voy a pedir a algunos que lo lean. All right. So five minutes for you to practice. Cinco minutos. Okay, if you have any questions, you know that you can ask. Now that we are having the review on present perfect, and also present perfect continuous. Okay, two minutes, two minutes more.
All right. I think you you are more than ready. Are you ready? Are you ready, people? Yes. Okay, so let us try. So I need two volunteers. Me, teacher. Thank you, Cesar. And also Juan Carlos. Go ahead. Okay. I think the weather has forgotten us. We have been waiting here for over half an hour and nobody has taken our order yet. I I think you're right. He has walked what be us the last 20, 20, 20 time. 20 times. He probably thinks we have already ordered it. Mm, look at a couple over there. They have only been here for five or 10 minutes and they already have their food. He must realize we haven't ordered it. Ordered. Yet, we have been sitting here for over half, half an hour staring at him. I don't know if he has been noticed as he has been running from table to table taking orders and serving food. That's true. And he hasn't looked in all direction once. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Listen, there are there are certain uh certain vocabulary. This is gonna be very useful for the whole group. Esto va a ser eh, muy útil para todo el grupo, okay? Fíjense que cuando yo era estudiante, todavía estudio, todavía aprendo, inglés no se termina nunca. Pero cuando yo iba a la universidad, aprendí algo muy, muy importante, que es verificar la pronunciación de aquellas palabras que yo considero tengo dudas. ¿Ok? Yo, por ejemplo, uh, puedo decir el verbo think. Think. Si ustedes van y buscan en, en la... En, es, en el internet, en un traductor con audio o en un diccionario, van a escuchar de primera mano cómo se pronuncia el verbo. Ok. Esto también. Think. List. Thinks. Miren la importancia de... Decirlo en tercera persona también. He, pro he probably thinks. Realize. Etc. Right? So that's true. That's true. Okay. So it's important. So it has even noticed. Noticed. Ve veo que algunos todavía. Saben el verbo hesitate. El verbo hesitar. He notado que algunos todavía tienen a dudar en la pronunciación de los verbos regulares. Vamos a escuchar a otras dos personas por ahí. Veamos. All right, let me see. Ahora los voy a elegir yo. So I want to listen to Dalila. And I want to listen to Margarita. Dalila and Margarita. Dalila, you start. I think they has 14 years 
we have been waiting for our hall and or and Novit had taken our order yet. I think you're right. He has worked by has a list. Twenty twenty times we he problems thing we have already ordered. You look at that couple over there. They had only been here for five or ten minutes, and they already had their food. He must realize we having ordered yet we have been sitting here for over half an hour studying at him i don't know if he has been knows or he has been room from table to table talking or dirt and serving food. That's true. And and he hasn't looking in all direction once. Okay, thank you. Now how do you pronounce this word, people? Once. Once. How do you pronounce this verb? Look, 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 Ahora, esos son pasados participios, pero acuérdense que el verbo, los verbos regulares, si usted se lo aprendió en pasado, entonces automáticamente se sabe el pasado participio, porque se escribe igual y se pronuncia igual. Entonces, la ED, ¿cómo suena en este caso? Sí. sí. ¿Se acuerdan que hablamos de los voiced and unvoiced? Este suena como T. No puede ser look it, no. Look. ¿Por, ¿Por qué no puede ser look it? Porque la, acá lo que suena como T es la, la E y la D. Entonces, la palabra la pronunciamos acá, look. Pero como al final la E y la, y la D va a sonar como T, entonces unimos look, look. Eso, no la T al final. No podemos decir look it. No. Ok, pretty good. Now. Oops, time is, time is almost uh, over. The same happens with this one. Noticed. Ordered. Walked. Etc. Right? So, actually, this is, this is the review. Creo que sí, ya habían, ya habían estudiado antes el, pre, el presente perfecto. Ok, porque noté que sí ya tenían la idea de, del mismo. Pero, uh, bueno, le voy a dejar de tarea un, un, un enlace acá. No me quiero... Ups. Por aquí van a encontrar muchos ejercicios de Present Perfect. En esta página, ok, aquí solo van a encontrar, solo van a, a ver el que había, al que había buscado yo, pero ahí mismo en esa página pueden buscar muchos ejercicios de Presente Perfect. Ahora, si quieren adentrarse más con Presente Perfecto Continuo, 
también pueden buscar ejercicios de presente perfecto continuo. El día de mañana, si Dios permite, vamos a hacer una comparación, ¿ok? Una comparación entre lo que hemos venido viendo de pasado simple, que pasamos prácticamente una semana practicando, y ahora nos encontramos con presente perfecto. Mañana vamos a ver ciertas diferencias entre ambos. De hecho, ahora, si ustedes se recuerdan, en la presentación vimos que el presente perfecto tiene diferentes usos. Por lo menos, si yo quiero decir de algo que yo he hecho en el pasado, pero no quiero mencionar cuándo fue, este es su uso presente perfecto. Yo he ido al mar. ¿Está en el pasado? Sí. ¿Cuándo fui? No se sabe. No es como que yo diga, el año pasado yo fui al mar. Ah, entonces ahí ya tengo un dato específico, el año pasado. Entonces eso es pasado simple. Eso es lo que vamos a comparar mañana. ¿Okay? ¿Los dos son pasados? Sí. Pero uno, no sabemos el tiempo cuando sucedió y el otro sí sabemos. ¿Okay? He estado estudiando inglés por muchos años. ¿Qué es eso? O he estudiado inglés por muchos años. Presente perfecto. Empecé en el pasado. Sí. Continúe en el presente. Sí. Y posiblemente continúe en el futuro. Entonces, ahí está enlazando. Yo he estudiado inglés por muchos años. Ese es otro uso que vimos ahora. Y así, pues, este, son detallitos que nos pueden ir sirviendo para este, ir enriqueciendo nuestro conocimiento en el idioma y al momento de nosotros expresar las ideas, que lo hagamos con claridad. Justamente lo que queremos hacer. ¿Por qué? Porque ya pronto, bueno, mañana, espero yo que ya ustedes produzcan algo con pasado simple y presente perfecto. Porque ya vimos pasado simple, ya practicamos pasado simple. Ahora practicamos presente perfecto, le metimos un poquito de presente perfecto continuo. Mañana vamos a hacer la comparación y partiendo de eso vamos a sacar un resultado. Así que vayan pensando también en cómo, más o menos algunas ideas de cómo, de cómo ir enlazando esos, esos, esos tiempos en inglés. Okay. Porque igual que en español, nosotros podemos hablar, empezar hablando en pasado, decir, bueno, yo cuando era niño solía ir este, a, a la cancha de fútbol a jugar con mis compañeros, mis amigos, después de estudiar en la escuela. Eh, ahora, pues que soy adulto, no tengo mucho tiempo y paso solo trabajando. Entonces, ¿qué, qué sucedió en esa, en esa frase o en esas frases que he dicho? Empecé a hablar de pasado, luego me pasé al presente y puedo seguir así al futuro. Por ejemplo, bueno, hoy que vamos a las vacaciones de diciembre, seguramente que volveré a ir. Seguramente regresaré a la cancha, encontraré a mis viejos amigos. Entonces ya me pasé a futuro. Entonces, todo eso ustedes tienen que ir aprendiendo a cómo ir coordinando esas ideas, que, que fluyan automáticamente, pero eso, para lograr eso, necesitamos practicar mucho, mucho, mucho. Así que no sé si hay preguntas. Esta noche fue de presentación, de información. Mañana vamos todavía con, eh, bueno, hicimos algunos ejercicios por ahí. Mañana vamos con present, eh, past simple versus present perfect and some other activity. Now, questions? No questions? No, no. comments? No. Aprendimos algo? Yes, teacher. Espero que sí. Okay. Además de eso, si ustedes se fijaron, yo hice una pausa para identificar, digamos, la importancia o hacer un par paréntesis para, para mm, resaltar la importancia de la pronunciación. Recordemos que nosotros no somos nativos, entonces tenemos que escuchar a los nativos, ¿ok? Mientras más escuchemos a los nativos, 
audios de personas norteamericanas, mejor va a ser nuestra pronunciación. Y siempre tratemos de imitarlos, ¿ok? Tratemos de imitarlos, aunque es difícil, la verdad, lograr un, una pronunciación. Se llama native speaking, que sea casi idéntica a la de ellos, pero mientras más lo practiquemos, mejor va a sonar nuestro segundo idioma. Así que los dejo con esa sugerencia y espero verlos mañana. Ah, ah, solo, solo voy a pasar la lista así rapidito. Ok, y cerramos. Alejandra. Al Aristides. Present. Carlos David. Present teacher. Cesar Iván. Present teacher. Claudia Margarita. Present teacher. Lourdes. Present. Dalila. Present teacher. Elena. I'm here. Gabriela. Present teacher. Idalia. Present teacher. Ileana. Present teacher. Ingrid. Present teacher. Juan Carlos. Present teacher. Crisia. Liliana. Present. María Magdalena. Present teacher. Olga. Present teacher. And Wendy. Present teacher. No, listen, algo también que antes de cerrar considero es importante. Teacher, es, dígame. teacher falté yo. Oh, Margarita. Margarita. Sí. Let me see, Margarita. Give me a second, I'm sorry. Ok. Margarita. Oh, ah, yeah. ya. Soy Dalia, ¿no? Right? No, Rina Margarita. Rina Margarita. Por, después de Magdalena o Olga, algo. Okay. Ah, Rina Margarita Arana. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Thank you. Oh, a, a piece of advice. Un, un, un consejo que, que les voy a dar, que es de mucho valor, para mí es de mucho valor, porque yo me remonto a cuando yo estaba en intermedio. Y eh, me recuerdo que fue, fue un periodo difícil porque empezamos a ver como estructuras como las que estamos viendo ahorita, que es presente perfecto, presente perfecto progresivo, y este se vienen otras, otras estructuras. Entonces, como que uno siente que el intermedio como que es difícil. No sé si ustedes lo han sentido así, pero eh, es, un, es una etapa en donde... Eh, es, es de tratar de, de seguir practicando sin desanimarse, porque es un periodo que pasa y cuando llegan a avanzado, ustedes se van a dar cuenta que intermedio era ese escalón necesario para pegar un salto más significativo, porque después de intermedio van a avanzado. O sea, es la preparación para avanzado. Entonces, cada tema que nosotros veamos o que vean con otro teacher, disfrútenlo al máximo, aunque lo vean difícil, métanle todas las ganas del mundo. Porque después se siente tan bonito que, no sé si ustedes ya han soñado en inglés, ya este, andan en la calle, andan pensando y andan pensando en inglés. ¿No les ocurre? ¿Les ocurre a algunos ya? Ok, verdad que es bonito. Esas son las etapas, son las etapas de ir aprendiendo el idioma. Yo me recuerdo que cuando soñé en inglés la primera vez yo sentí bonito, porque yo era bilingüe en el sueño. <risa> y ya luego pues empecé que en las calles yo todo el tiempo andaba pensando en inglés y wow, es una experiencia única. Porque ya después, cuando ya uno va avanzado, ya las ideas, las ideas surgen aparecen y ya uno ya no está ni traduciendo, ni buscando vocabulario, sino que ya uno va directamente a dar los pensamientos que uno tiene. Okay. Llegar a eso no es sencillo, pero es muy gratificante. Así que los dejo con eso y espero verlos el día de mañana. Bendición. Thank you, Thank you. teacher. Good Thank night. You, teacher. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.